Hey everybody, Mike here. Welcome to the channel and welcome to the second video in my 3D Code series. Now, if you saw the first video, you know why I'm doing the series and you know what the series is going to look like, right? They're going to be short videos, they're going to be very easy to understand and the purpose is to help you get started in 3D Code, right? Now, today we're going to be looking at the um, voxel uh, sculpting room. Now, in the first video, I mentioned the uh, polygon modeling room, uh, but the reason why I'm going to do the voxel sculpting first is because there are things you can do there that make your life uh, modeling wise much, much easier. Now, most of you think of ZBrush when you think of sculpting, but I'll show you what I mean, right? We're not going to go with surface sculpting because that is uh, tweaking an existing polygon model. We're going to go to voxel sculpting and we're going to start from scratch. All right, so I can choose an option here. I'm just going to start with a simple cube and there you go. Now, if you see this, it looks like you're in Blender or in Maya or something, right? It's just a straight up cube. And here you have all the options. You can go in here and choose this or this or this. So you would say, hey, this is a, a modeling package, right? But don't be mistaken, these are voxels, not polygons. The reason why it is so cool is because 3D Code has a super, super intelligent retopo room, right? So you can sculpt your object here and you don't have to worry about clean topology. You don't have to worry about n-gons, nothing like that, right? You just make whatever you want to make and then 3D Code will take care of it. Now, the next thing I need to tell you is that this cube is orange. Well, if you're not colorblind, you already know that. Why is that important? Well, it's orange because we didn't commit to this shape just yet, right? This is a shape that we're working on. That's why it's orange. Once we're happy with what it looks like, we're going to hit apply because here we have the options to play with and then we hit apply and then we commit to it. Next to that apply button, there's a drop down where it says add, subtract, intersect and split. Now, typically it's on add. Okay. So we have this cube. What can we do so far? Well, we have the typical gizmo um, uh, options here, like in any other 3D program. We can do an overall scale just by pulling on this. We can scale in one direction, take this cube or this cube or this cube, right? We can move it around, arrow, arrow, and arrow, or we can go in here and we can use these uh, kind of pie pieces, if you will, rotate that direction, that direction, and uh, that direction. Now I'm gonna hit Control Z to go back, which is the same as, for example, in Maya, and here's our cube. Now, how do you navigate around in 3D code? Well, you have left mouse, middle mouse, right mouse. Left mouse, rotate around or orbit, right? Middle mouse, pan, right mouse, zoom in and out. So none of that weird uh, control alt shift F1, whatever type deal where you take, uh, you have to spend months to get used to it. Super, super intuitive, okay? Now I got my cube. Let's say I'm happy with it, right? What I'm going to do is I'm going to click on apply or I'm going to hit enter, right? Hit apply, color changes. But what's going on? I got greenish orange right now. Well, the reason being is that it committed to this shape and it created a new one immediately, right? So here is the one he created and I'll hit W uh, to see the gray one. Yeah. It hit W and then it went with a new one. Well, why is that? Because 3D code assumes that after creating this cube, I want to do something else. So I can easily go and create a new object, any of these, right? Or just go with the one I had. Okay. Now with this cube right here, I can do a lot of things and I'll just show you a few examples. I'm just going to scale it down, scale it in like this. Let's uh, move it up and move it in here, right? Now let's say I want a Boolean. I don't have to click and shift click and all that kind of stuff. The only thing I have to do is go to my apply section and instead of add, I'm going to do subtract, right? And I'm just going to click on apply. How easy is that? And keep in mind, we're in the sculpting room, right? This is not modeling. This is hard surface sculpting. So let's do another one. Let's uh, take my original cube 
and again this this thing will stay orange i can just you know i don't even have to touch my keyboard i can just uh use my mouse right so let's go in here and let's do a second section where we want to cut something well, let's have a look where do i want this i want this let's say general area here And let's uh, push that down. And again, we'll go up here, we'll go to subtract. So apply, and there you have it. So we've got another one. You get the idea, right? So it's super, super intuitive. Now you can do that. Uh, a couple other things you can do is you can, for example, cut off corners or you can extrude sections, right? Now, how do we do that? I'm just gonna hit the space bar on my keyboard. And here you have a whole bunch of options, okay? Now the options you're seeing here are the same options that you have in this entire list here on the left, right? Oh, I clicked on something weird. I'll just go back in a second. But all these options are here, right? Right, so I'm gonna hit my space bar and I'm gonna look for the cut tool, which is under adjust right here, okay? So now that I have the cut tool, I need to choose what kind of uh, stamp or, or mold or whatnot I'm going to use to do the cutting, okay? So I'm going to hit E on my keyboard, and that will give me these options. Now, let's go in here and take the third one, which is a vertex lasso, okay? Now, what I can do with that is I can just click, drag, and close the triangle and cut off that corner. So... You see that the corner is gone, right? I can go in here, I can uh, do that again, right? So let's just say, I wanna go in here and cut this off. And there you go. Super, super intuitive. It's of course rubbish what I'm doing right now, but hey, don't worry about it, right? So that's what you can do. Let's say there's a section that you want to extrude, right? What you can do is you can use the pose option. And again, you would be uh, making something functional, not messing around like I'm doing right now. Okay, so the pose option, you hit the space bar, you go to the transform section and you click on pose. And pose uh, will allow you to select an area that you can then extrude, right? So I'm going to hit E on my keyboard again, because I want to select what area I want to extrude. Let's go with this uh, rectangle here. And we're gonna go in here and we're gonna create that rectangle, okay? Now, let's move that around. Uh, I didn't commit to this just yet, so I can go in here, I can push it in, something like this, and if I'm happy with it, I just hit enter. And I'll show you that it is in fact there. There you go, okay? So, very, very powerful. Now, you can do all of this in the, uh, the poly modeling room as well, right? But there you would have to deal with faces and vertices and edges like you would in Maya or Blender. Of course, we're going to do that too. But I just wanted to start off in the voxel sculpting room to give you an idea of uh, how cool that is, right? And then if you jump to another room, and you can see this gray blob, by the way, uh, if I hold on my left uh, key and drag, it will make my brush size much smaller, okay? So I can go in here and make it smaller. And then you can go in here and move it around, All right? So I think this is plenty for a, uh, a single video. Um, yeah, I'm going to do, uh, I think, poly modeling in the next one. Uh, and if you've got any requests, let me know and I'll happily include it. Okay. Well, thanks for watching. Uh, hope you enjoyed the 3D Code series and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Well, thanks for watching. And before you go, please hit that MH button to subscribe. Okay. See you guys next time. Bye.